Hey everybody, today we're gonna to be talking about some things, specifically black and gray shading and how I approach a black and gray tattoo. The tattoo I'm gonna be showing you guys is not completely finished. It is part of a sleeve that I'm working on and we just kind of started on the bottom part of the arm. But what we got done will be enough for me to get my point across to you. I will say, if you are an apprentice, I do recommend taking these techniques and trying them out on fake skin first before just jumping in on a client. So enough talking, let's get into it. So here's the machine, needles, and ink along with the voltage that I use for this tattoo in case anybody cares. I do have a discount code for access in the video description, so feel free to check that out. At the beginning of the day, this is what I had to work with. It is all healed. A lot of this is lined with light gray wash just to hold the stencil on the skin. As you can see, I also did a little bit of light shading in the skull just to save my place where the darkest areas are and the rose is healed. We didn't have a ton of time last sitting, so this is as far as we got. Now, after this sitting, this is as far as we got. You can see I use the traditional smooth gray shading, but I also use stipple shading in the rose and the skull to make them stand out a little more. Uh, this is something I like to do. You don't have to do it. I do have the link to an in-depth stipple shading explanation in the video description if you wanted to check that out later. Like you saw, my voltage ranged anywhere from six to 10 volts during this tattoo. Uh, the reason for that is because when I went back and forth between smooth shading and stipple shading, the stipple shading is on the lower spectrum spectrum of that voltage parameter and the smooth shading is on the higher end. The voltage for your hand speed and your machine will probably be different than mine since everybody tattoos differently. So after getting in the main shapes like I did in the first sitting, I like to then go in and put in my blacks and my darkest shades. Pushing the contrast right off the bat helps me figure out where I'm going for the rest of the sitting. If you start out by doing your lightest areas first, you run the risk of going too dark and then the entire tattoo will end up too dark and muddy. So I always make sure that I do the blacks and the darkest tones first. For as much of the tattoo as possible, I use the 27 curved mag. Reason being is it is easier for me to get a smooth gradients with the larger mags. You can pull this off with a smaller mag, but I find it easier with the larger needle groupings. And it's also always fun to see the look on your client's face when you pull out a large mag or a you know really thick liner. As always, making sure that the skin is stretched properly is very important when you're trying to get smooth shades into the skin. If the skin is too loose, your needle will hit certain areas harder than others and make things look really choppy. Having the skin tight will help the needle hit consistently everywhere that you put it. There are a few different motions that I make with my hand while doing gray shading. It just depends on what part of the tattoo I'm on. You will see me make all of these motions throughout this video multiple times over the same spot. This is because I'm building up the tone to what I want it to be. Getting the tone that you want in the skin as quickly as possible with the least amount of passes that you need to make over it is super important while you're tattooing, just so you don't damage the skin. But you will get to know how many times you're able to go over the same spot without causing damage. And this just all comes with experience. So the first motion that I use is a shoveling or a whipping motion. I'll enter the skin against a hard edge at the proper depth and whip out quickly. As I'm whipping, my hand pressure decreases so I can get a fading effect. Don't use this unless you're trying to get a hard edge effect because that is exactly what you'll get. You wouldn't want to use this method on like a cheek or anything like that where you just want a soft shade. So next, I will use a back and forth sweeping motion. This is when I want to get a smooth shade or a transition. I'm entering and exiting the skin, basically moving like a landing and taking off airplane. There should be no definite start and stop to your shade, and it should be very smooth. I'm basically feathering in and out of the skin. And the last motion I'll use is a dragging motion. I'll also use this against a hard edge. Basically, it's the same as the whip motion, but you're just moving slower. You're still decreasing in hand pressure as you're approaching the area that you want to fade out to a lighter shade. And I'll use this method when there's a larger area off of an edge that's just a smooth gradient. It isn't necessary to use. It's interchangeable with the first two methods of hand movement. It's just depending how I'm feeling. Cross hatching your shading patterns will make them look smoother. So if you're shading under a rose petal and you're shading out in one direction, but going back to build up that tone in the opposite direction will smooth things out even more. You'll see me changing the direction that I'm shading a lot throughout this video, and that's exactly why. Overall, what I focus on with black and gray is contrast, texture, and smoothness. It takes practice, but once you get the hang of it, it becomes second nature. Now, I'm not gonna go over stipple shading in this video since I made a full video on that recently, like I said, but I do use stipple shading in smooth black and gray designs to achieve different textures. For example, in the skull or rose. I just used it in those so then that way those two elements stuck out and then the background was able to kind of sink back in the background with the smooth shading. So go check that video out if you wanna learn more about it. 
I'll leave it down in the video description. It seemed like a lot of people liked that video, but I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. Enjoy the rest of the tattoo, and I hope that you have a good day.